Welcome back to ADHD with me, Travis Mills. I'm sorry there were no podcasts last two weeks, but I'm back. I'm done shooting my show, and today I have a very special guest. It's my friend Justin Escalana. What's up? Thank you for having me. Of course. You know what's crazy, dude, is that uh, you've you've been much requested in the comments section of my YouTube. Is that right? Yeah. That's so crazy. I'm glad that we can make this happen. Well, hey, thank you guys for requesting me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to… Dude, how, did we meet paintballing? Yes, we did meet paintballing. And how long ago was that? It had to have been like over a year, maybe two. Oh, definitely two years ago. Yeah, yeah, two years then. And uh, I mean, first of all, I want to say that like when I met you to now, you're doing just so much shit. <laughs> <laughs> because when I met you, you were like doing your video thing. You had your YouTube, but right. you were in school, you know, yeah, like yeah. full time, yeah. which I believe you're still in school. Yeah, it's my last week. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. So it's really, it's almost summer for you. Yeah, it's after tomorrow, it's over. Nice. And I'm well, I'll have to take finals. Hopefully I don't fail. But <laughs> what happens if you fail? I still get a walk at graduation and uh, I might have to like do some extra class, but I just don't think I'll do that extra class. Okay. We'll just kind of call it a day. Okay, so don't fail. <laughs> yeah. That's the goal. Yeah. But dude, when we I mean, you know, I don't think you had 1340 Collective yet, which is your clothing company. I did, but not as like not like how it is now. You it's, weren't like going super hard yeah. with it. And you weren't I, I don't think you were like creating a, a ton of content around it. Yeah, definitely not. Um, you weren't touring. No. And you weren't in Forbes yet. <laughs> <laughs> so take me through. How old are you? I'm 22. Yeah. T- tell me how a 22-year-old, uh, you know, ended up in Forbes. Um, well, I'm probably going to clickbait this video with that too, by the way. <laughs> so like, um, I, th- actually, I'm getting a lot of press recently and I'm very thankful for it. Like it's been really cool to be getting all these articles written about me. What do you attribute that to? all from my clothing company that I've made. Mm. And it's just about how I feel like I've gone about marketing this clothing brand out of like nothing. Because I don't really have any, I don't have any partners, it's just me. And I was able to create a clothing company, if you guys don't know. I made a brand called 1340 Collective. And what it is, it stands for my freshman dorm room number. I made the company as a joke because my, uh, uh, while I was a freshman in college, a kid in my dorm, like down the hall, was like flexing on everybody about how he made this like incredible clothing brand. And I was like, well, you kind of didn't. You only sold 10 units. Like, that's not sick. And in true USC fashion, I decided to outdo him. And I made a brand, I had no name for it. So I just called it 1340 because my room number sounded cool. <laughs> and in that first week, we uh, made like $20,000. And I was like, okay, I'm on to something here. Did you tell that kid? Oh, he actually reached out to me and I, I was kind of scared to reply to the text. He was like, <laughs> what did he say? He's like, hey man, I see what you're doing. I, I read that article on Entrepreneur about it. Uh, I'm sorry if you felt, if I made you feel that way. And I was like, no, actually, thank you for making me feel that way because it kind of changed my entire life like unexpectedly. Yeah. Yeah, but I guess how I've been able to scale it from just a joke into like a real company, I think a lot of, uh, I guess a lot of publications think it's interesting to write about. Definitely. And how what, how do you feel like, you know, you got the ideas to scale it? Um, it all, scaling the, scaling a clothing company is really strange, but also living in LA definitely helped me out like infinitely because being out here, meeting people like you, just like how it is out here, you can just always run into someone new who's down to like wear your clothes, like if they actually like it. And that's what I find is interesting is a lot of people think you need to do a lot of paid promotions, like the whole influencer marketing thing, where you need to like have like millions and millions of dollars to promote your brand. But when you become like real friends with someone, you're like, hey man, here's a shirt. You can wear it if you want to. If you don't like it, like that's cool too. And then they put it up on Instagram. And next thing you know, I I realized that that post from that person who has 5 million followers and just my friend is probably worth like a few hundred thousand dollars. And they just did it for free. And I, I'm not ever asking my friends to take these photos. They just do it because they genuinely enjoy it. And that's kind of the whole business model right now. Just I always say money doesn't make you rich. Relationships make you rich. It's 100% true. Yeah. Like, it, there's, I feel like a lot of like companies that are um, starting up right now feel like they have this idea that, oh, I'm just going to do influencer marketing. But it's so vague. Like, no one really knows. Like, a lot of these, like, startup companies have no idea what they're even saying. It's like they're saying, like, oh, we're just going to do Instagram ads, Facebook ads. Like, what does that really mean? 
are you just using this vague terminology of, oh, we're just going to boost our posts. It's going to get a few more thousand views. Like that's not real marketing. Real marketing is when, in my opinion, like when you're just constantly in people's subconscious day after day, repeatedly. And like, I guess it's just like really targeted brand awareness. And that's what I try to accomplish with my marketing. Yeah. Where'd you grow up? Uh, suburbs of Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. So for everyone listening, I mean, how did you make your way out to LA? So <laughs> when I was younger, I used to be really into uh, music, like like hip hop music. There was this like weird pocket of time where a lot of people would go on tour. Like if you're an artist, you had the opportunity, like you're not even that big yet. You were, you were doing the nationwide tour. Like yep. people like, say like Mike Studd or like Huey Of course, Matt. no, we talked about that. Yeah. And did you, and was that like when you you started like filming all that stuff? Yeah, so I didn't have any money, like personal money. Like if you had $20 back in the day, like when you're like in eighth grade, like that's like a lot of money. You had a crack in Friday night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like uh, this rapper, Mike Studd actually came in town and I, all my friends were going, I didn't have any money to buy a ticket, but I did have my dad's camera. So I took my dad's camera. I took the train down to the city by myself, giving you, know, I'm like 13 years old. And I walk up to the security guard with this camera around my neck. And I was like, uh, here, I'm, I'm shooting for Rolling Stones. And they're like, oh, welcome. Walked right in. And this, I guess, was before the era of like where Instagram was cool. Social media wasn't really cool. So like, I guess if I just had a big enough camera, they believed me. I was like this really, really scrawny, short, like definitely an eighth grade kid. And from that point moving forward, I snuck onto the stages. I do that every single weekend like over and over again. And it led to uh, a lot of cool relationships with a lot of cool artists. Do you think that kids could still do that now? Oh, 100%. Like, I, I, it's so funny. Like kids always hit me up saying like, how do you sneak into a Coachella? And it's like, well, it's pretty simple. Like, I, How is it simple? <laughs> just put on like one of those working vests. Like, like if you're like a construction worker, like with like the neon green uh, with a re reflective 3M, walk right in. Okay, so you get a reflective vest. Where do you get those from? Like Walmart, Home Depot. Ladies and gentlemen, anywhere. I'm saving you thousands of dollars <laughs> right? on VIP passes, okay? Like you you should be thanking just, this man. Did ask just walk in and have this thing on and have like maybe put a construction helmet on? Uh, I've seen videos of a construction like, helmet. Yeah, literally. And like, I saw this one guy snuck into like a massive event. I think it was the Super Bowl because he walked in with him and his homies, had the vest on, the helmet, and they just carried a ladder and they walked right past the security guards. What like, the fuck? Because they thought he they were like maintenance workers. And they yeah, just who took, walks around with a ladder? Yeah, and they just right when they walked in, they took all the stuff off and had their uh, had their shirt on. <laughs> They're in. And you think that shit would still work at, at Coachella? Oh, yes. If you need to just have the confidence. Confidence is so key in anything you do in life. If you act like you're obviously pretending to be a construction worker, it's like, a, yo, like, get out. Well, I've realized that just from touring and everything. Like, now when I go to watch, like, you know, French shows or whatever, right. if someone that we're with, like, you know, doesn't have a certain pass or laminate or band, I'll just, right. like, I'll be like, dude, just, just walk. Just walk. Watch, nothing's right. gonna happen. Just act like you're supposed to be. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. And yeah, it really goes like when you know when you just kind of act like you're supposed to be there. People just kind of allow you to be. Yeah. There. If you weren't doing it, it was so funny. Like there, there was other kids trying to sneak in when I was younger, and they all got shut down because there's like ah, oh, like I'm uh, I'm, uh, I'm I'm shooting for 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 this, and they're like, no, you're not. And they're like, uh, well, yeah, I am. Like that's not convincing. You go up to him straight face. Hey, man, I'm shooting for Rolling Stones. Uh, my past should be here. The best thing is that you didn't even say the right name of the magazine. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just, just Rolling Stones. <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh, my God, yeah. I literally just had an article come out, and I said, I got corrected about how I say it wrong every time. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I keep doing it wrong. On oh, see, I thought that you really said that because you were like 13 and didn't know any better. No, no, I, I still say that. Rolling like, Stones. Like when I tell that story, I still That's say it wrong. It's a band. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, so that 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 happened. But you made a you made a video about sneaking into festivals and shit, right? Yeah, I did. That that was like a video I made when I was uh, in high school. Wow. And, and it, same technique. Same technique, though. That video is really about like how he's just, it's called Fifty Music Festivals for zero dollars. I haven't talked about this film like ever. <laughs> so it's so weird that this has come up today. Well, I remember that when we started hanging out, uh, I think you showed it to me, and I was like, I was really impressed with it. I was like, Dude, oh this yeah, is, that, this is fucking dope. Yeah. Um, sorry, keep going. Yeah, so it was about like me sneaking in all these concerts. And then the end of it was how, because I'm from Chicago, Chance the Rapper does one show at the time in Chicago per year. 
And my friend is like a blogger. Once you start knowing a lot of bloggers and like the music scene, it's really easy to get passes to things. And I got, I picked up my pass and I went outside of the festival and I cut it. And I thought like, hey, let's like try to just sneak in because it make it more fun. And uh, <laughs> we snuck in and like we met Chance and everything. It was so sick. That's incredible. And you documented the whole thing. Yeah, I had a, I don't know how, like when people say like, it's not, it's hard. I was literally wearing a GoPro on my head the entire experience. And like no one said anything. <laughs> they just said it was all right. It just looked normal to me, man. Yeah, yeah. like it, it, it just worked. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you talked a little bit about, you know, growing your brand. And, and one of the ways you did it is just by putting clothes on your friends, you yeah. know, not asking for anything, but just yeah. kind of giving things. How did you become friends with some of the people, you know, influential people growing up in Chicago? Because I know like someone that you're really close to uh, is this dude, Khalid. Yeah. How did you and Khalid meet? Uh, just... He, so I just want to preface it by saying like Khalid is the absolute man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I love that guy. But um, that friendship really happened supernaturally. Uh, I reached out to him like probably three years ago on Twitter saying, hey man, just listen to Location. Uh, really a big fan. And this is when the song had like 10,000 plays on SoundCloud. And I only saw it because like it popped up on my Twitter feed just super randomly. And then nothing, I thought nothing of it. He like replied saying like, thanks man. And then like a few months go by and he hits me up out of the blue in the DMs. Like, hey man, I just moved to LA. Do you still live here? And I was like, yes. He's like, all right. Like, what are you doing tomorrow? And from that day forward, we just hung out every single day. Dope. And then he became the Khalid you guys all know now. Yeah. Super. It's like the coolest thing to witness. Like I have so many video clips. Like you just on my phone of like. Well, I was going to say, because you guys kind of put together this like. It was like a montage of like everything from the start, right? And, yeah, and, yeah. And some of your clips were in there. A lot of a lot of your clips were in there. Yeah, I made a short film, like kind of just like it was kind of like a congratulate uh, congratulations to Khalid. It's called My Friend Khalid, and it's all about like how I'm just like really proud of him, which I really am. Like it's cool. I was at Coachella this year, and like seeing him perform is it's pretty wild. Did you sneak in? Uh, I didn't have to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to like, you need to like be, you need to like offer some coaching, like some coaching courses. I feel like the kid are like probably lessons. illegal or something. Huh? Yeah, no, def it's definitely <laughs> illegal. That's not a question. Without a doubt, it's illegal. But I feel like you can make some good money before they shut you down. Yeah, right. You know, and I feel like, I feel like the sentence will be minimal. You yeah. Know? <laughs> you know all about scaling companies, dude. You just, you just don't scale this one too far. Don't have collect lead post about it find the right pocket on the on YouTube exactly that wants to pay for yeah it. like you know don't have khalid post it yeah exactly yeah but you know you can keep <laughs> it under the khalid level then then we're good to go um dude so talk to me about these you're, you're doing tours now yeah it's a really crazy thing and you posted something you said like you had a manager oh yeah who didn't you told him about this idea that you wanted to go on tour yeah he pretty much laughed at you yeah, I was like, much. it's not possible. This isn't going to happen. And then you're like, all right, fuck it. I'm just going to do this myself. Yeah, it was this really weird day where I, so I had this screening with, with that old manager. Like we did one in LA. We sold it out. Like over like 150 to 200 people came. It was incredible. It was and like, it was a screening of a film. What, what was it? Yeah, so I made a film called The Story of 1340 Collective. And it's a 24 minute like short film document documentary about like, uh, me building my company, but it's not really just about the company. It's really a story of friendship. It's about how the guy who helps me film all my stuff, all the content, it played a big role in the video in the creation of this company. Like, content is so key to like building companies on the internet now. Yeah, and without like my friend, it'd be really impossible. So, uh, I, I had this idea to like screen it instead of putting it on YouTube. And like, you know, it's like meet people. I feel like it's such a sick experience to meet someone in real life that you watch on the internet. And it enhances the experience like tenfold. Because like if I, a, a YouTuber is just a YouTuber to me, like to my, and, but if I ever met them, I have this like new connection. And also for like me as like a creator, I wanted to see the people who actually watch this stuff to make it more tangible than just like a digital number, you know? Yeah. So we had this screening in LA and it crushed. And it's, it's if I, the the format of every show is screen Q and A meet and greet, and I, it's more so like the the film is an excuse to have an opportunity to meet the fans. And I was like, "Yo, man, like we made a good amount of money. Um, I I really want to expand this beyond LA." And then he's like, "Okay, I'll think about it." And then he kind of just like ignored it for a while. And I'm like, "Hey, man, I really want to do this tour." And then he goes on a phone call with me. He goes. Yeah, our agency, give in mind, is a touring agency. I was like, I want to do, he's like, uh, the only way we can do that is if you give us a percentage of 1340. 
And I was like, wait. And he said it so casually. And I think he, he people like that are very manipulative in, in Hollywood. And like a very, someone who wasn't paying attention for that type of answer back would have done it and just gone completely fucked over. And like, why would a tour about my clothing company, which is essentially a meet and greet tour, require you to have equity in a company that does, that's not even related. Yeah. And uh, I remember hanging up the phone and just be calling my my roommate and being like, yo, do you, do you know how to plan tours? And, him, and he's like, no. And him and I, for the next two days, planned a whole tour. And it now we're doing it. And how many cities? A lot. <laughs> like, it's ad time. Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by ADHD merch. Go to fanjoy.co slash ADHD. Pick up some merch like this really cool phone case, hoodies, joggers, coffee cups, all of that. I love you guys. Today's episode of the podcast is also brought to you by Blinkist. Uh, in today's age, it can be hard to find the time to sit down and learn more. It's not easy when social media can be so addictive and time consuming. So you may think you don't have time to read a book or to develop yourself, but there is an app for that. I highly recommend it. It's called Blinkist. Blinkist is the only app that takes the best key takeaways, the need to know info from thousands of nonfiction books and condenses it down into just 15 minutes so you can read it or listen to it. Eight million people. People are using Blinkist right now, and it has a massive and growing library from self help, from self help, business, health to history books. Uh, I like Blinkist because in less than fifteen minutes, I can learn everything I need to know about something, which is super easy because I don't have that much time, and my mind works like a, a machine gun, and I have you know really bad <laughs> focus issues. Uh, and I love to use Blinkist when I'm driving in the car because I'm an audio book dude already. So the fact that I I can learn, listen to something and learn about it. Makes it super convenient. Um, I've read and listened to these books. I highly recommend you can check them out. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, uh, Getting Things Done, How to Win Friends and Influence People, The Power of Habits, and The Four Hour Work Week. Right now, for a limited time, Blinkist has a special offer just for ADHD listeners. Go to Blinkist.com slash ADHD to start your free seven-day trial. That's Blinkist, spelled B L I N. K-I-S-T, Blinkist.com slash ADHD to start your free seven-day trial. Blinkist.com slash A-D-H-D. I was in Toronto last weekend. We've gone to Vancouver, San Francisco, going to New York on Friday. Wow. Uh, Chicago, another LA show. And you're doing all of this on the weekends? Yes, every single weekend. Because you're still in school? Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> it's so simple. <laughs> <laughs> so are you like studying on the flights back from tour? Like honestly, like kind of. Yeah, like I, like my script classes, I write the scripts on the flights home. Uh, it's <laughs> it's such a weird experience. Like I have such a strange um, outlook on life recently because everything feels like a game. I've really dev I've dove like headfirst into the simulation theory because I really feel like that's how my life is turning out to. Is that why you're mentioning red pill, blue pill yeah, shit it's, it's before like, we started going? Like a, I've seen these pills everywhere here. They're literally red and blue. They're pillows. They're not They're not actual pills. I don't have just pills <laughs> just around the studio. And I was like, oh my <laughs> God. Like on the way here, I was making jokes with my manager about how like my, my new one, about how... Uh, <laughs> uh, what if I just hijacked this podcast? And I was like, hey, I've talked about 1340 enough. How about we talk about the simulation? <laughs> oh, you want to, dude, you want to go down that road? Let's fucking go down that road. So talk to me about, okay, so what is this simulation you speak of? So like the, the, the very simple story for the people who might not know what it is, it's this theory that nothing is real in life and we're just in a simulation. Um, we're not like what we're experiencing day to day. There's something much greater than this. Like there's like almost religious, you can, religious beliefs can be tied into it, but it's more so like when you die, you don't die. You just take off a VR headset and you look around and you realize that your whole life you just played out was a game and that game only kind of lasted five minutes in that world you're in. That's like the super simple theory of it. So then where are you with the headset on? Where, what is See, that? See now that's where I don't know. And kind of that's, <laughs> and that's what's interesting to me. I'm just and who gonna, made the headset? Yeah, like I, I don't know. Where did I buy that headset? Where did Best hypothetical buy. me <laughs> get this? Get this? <laughs> this hypothetical headset? <laughs> you ran did out. I order it off hypothetical Amazon? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just so crazy when you start thinking about how like the galaxy is so big and like the fact that we don't know any other intelligent life has me really confused about who I am recently. Oh, you don't think that, that someone knows something about aliens? Oh, I, I do. Yeah. I do think that there's, I think it's like super common knowledge amongst like the higher community. But uh, I don't think I'll ever be in those circles to learn about it until they make contact. We're in the public. age of information, dude. I feel like some shit's going to come out sometime. Yeah, I think because I'm only 22. Like I have a strong theory like within the next 50 years, like 50 years is a very long time. Um, like we're going to see something, some information is going to come out and seem like, yeah, like there we've known about aliens for like a very long time. And because like when you do the math, it's pretty incredible to think that like, it's, I almost think it's closed minded to think that there is no such alien life because if you compare the size of our earth to our sun and how like tiny it is to the sun and the sun compared to the sun's sun and how tiny that sun is, it's just nuts to think that there's nothing else out there. And I don't know. I've been going down the road. Well, when you put it like that, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> You talked about writing scripts uh, when you're on the flight back. What kind of scripts are you writing? Uh, I just write like comedies. <laughs> it's just my boy and I would because we travel so much now that we have all these like you get a lot of perks like a lot of just free wine on these flights. I just drink a but like two glasses of wine and write like a dumbass comedy. And like some of them are funny, some are not at all. And have you ever like gone gone ahead and like shot shot some? I'm actually shooting one of them that I, I recently wrote. Dope. I, I think it's. The most goofy little thing. <laughs> and what are you shooting? Are you are you? Do you have to like show these in class? And yeah, so uh, some classes you, you usually sometimes you have to like play it out loud to your classmates, like out front, like maybe like a ten page script, and you just assign people to read whoever. And it's kind of just one big table read, and that's that's pretty fun to like hear other people see it because I can visualize it in my head. Some you just submit and you get a grade back, but uh, some like you you write to be shot. And uh, recently, I haven't had to do any of those to be shot like assignments because I rather just write something that I shoot for myself, not for a grade. So I save kind of like my better stuff because I don't want the USC stamp all over it. Got it. What do your classmates think about all this shit? Because I mean, I mean, I'm saying like you know, most of them are probably focused on like you know Friday night going out to get right. fucked up, and you're like, yo, I gotta catch a flight and go to Toronto and like shoot like you know do this like See, premiere. I thought I was the only one who's living this like absurd life, but like the USC film school, I'm, it's not, I'm not really trying to sound like an advertisement here, but like it really is the best kids in the world like that I've met. I don't even consider myself like nearly as good as half the kids in my school. They just blow me out the water when it comes to film. Well, I was just with a kid. I went to dinner with him last night. And he's like, yeah, I travel every weekend too because I've been shooting like branded commercials, like massive budget commercials. And yeah, I was in Paris last week and I was I was in Vancouver, I was in Toronto. I'm like, oh my God, like you do the exact same thing. Leaves on the Friday, comes back Monday. And he's, I was like, how did you do that for Paris? And he's like, yeah, I left on Thursday, I came back Monday. And that's 24 hours worth of travel round trip. So Damn. I'm like, oh, I guess I'm not the only one. Do you feel like once you graduate, do you graduate this year? Yeah, I do. How long have you been in school? Well, four years of college. Yeah. And this this whole time, like you've been doing this while while you've been a student, which is crazy. What do you think, how, like, what do you think is going to change most now that you're about to like close this chapter of your life? I think the reason why I'm going through this crazy like crisis of the, the simulation, how big is the world is because I'm pr mentally preparing myself for like kind of like actually going into the real world. Like it, it's dumb for me to say that because I have like businesses that are operating and stuff like that. Like I'm not one of those people who's going to graduate college and be struggling to get a job or anything. But it's just definitely going to make a major shift in my life. I'm not having to like always have the back of my head. Oh, I have to write that script tonight. Oh, I have to write that paper. That's due. But like, I don't know. It, it's just going to feel like this weird sense of freedom. And I'm very excited and kind of like uncomfortable about it. But more so excited. Has work ever gotten in the way of school? Oh, yeah. Every day. <laughs> Literally every day. How do you, like, mitigate that? Yeah, it's, it, 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 every, I think anything is possible in life if you have good time management skills. And I just work as hard as possible to delegate times for everything. I have a very strict routine pretty much every single day. Wake up early, go to the gym, go to class for, like, four hours, and edit for a little bit, go out and shoot. Uh, whatever content I need, and then maybe uh, reply to my emails, 
And then I kind of just turn off everything and I hang out with my friends. Are you still uploading videos every day? No, thank God, no. Okay. <laughs> I was like, how the fuck are you doing this, dude? Hell no. I do three days a week. Three days a week. It's still a lot. But it's, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, but I feel like scaling back the, the quantity has allowed me to make the quality like infinitely better. So I'm really excited about what I've been putting out recently. And I feel like the people who've been watching it are really receptive. Definitely. What about paintball? You still find time to go play paintball? Well, last time I saw you, we were at the paintball park. I know. We were actually shooting something together. Yeah, that was pretty nice. Just for like the get out. Uh, it was try. It was like a promotional the, the thing. Try paintball. Try thing. paintball.com. Yeah, that was it. It's trying to get uh, get kids out and, and active, which I, I really like that. I'm a big fan of that. Like as growing up, I feel like you might have even seen it. All the like go like go play football, go play baseball ads yeah. on TV. Just a different spin on it. Like try paintball. Like I really enjoy paintball. I grew up my whole life playing paintball. So like it was really cool to come out to LA and realize that I was not the only one because back in… In Chicago, they got crazy parks and shit or what? Yeah, they have the one that has the is the Nuketown. Dude, oh, that's where it is. Yeah. Yes. I want to go play there. You've played it? Yeah, that's like probably 25 minutes away from my house. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I've always wanted to go there. Yeah, but like like kids didn't really play paintball. It was kind of more of like a, it's my birthday. Let's go play paintball. Got it. And I was the only one who really took it serious like that. So when I came out here and I realized that like almost 85% of my friends all play paintball as well. I was like, this is so sick. Yeah. And that's how we met. Yeah, well, I mean, and then when you know the dude who owns the paintball park, that also helps, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I found myself just like not wanting to do anything else but that for a long time. Oh, you get obsessed. Yeah, I, I, I get obsessed with shit, dude. Yeah, like, was- when I find a new hobby, I just I just want to like learn everything about it and master it and… Then move on. I, I do that, yeah. Yeah, that's the same, same thing with me. Like, why did, why did at one point when I was in high school buy a $1,500 paintball gun? Mm. When I was the only one who played paintball. My friends didn't even go with me. I was like running it with like 40-year-olds. Dude, I just bought a crazy mountain bike a couple months ago. And I'm, none of my friends have mountain bikes. Mm-hmm. I don't… <laughs> it, it, you know, it fucking hit me when I'm riding that shit around my house. And I'm like, all right, I didn't think it would be like this though. Right. I didn't think it would be like this. <laughs> uh… <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, just I, you know, I guess I didn't think that went through. Right. My my last purchase that was pretty, like I don't know, just I'd say like irrational was I just bought a gaming laptop. For what reason? To, you play, to you play, play that games. Much? You play yeah. that much? I mean, look, I have PS4, I have Xbox, but like yeah. I just wanted to get on on a PC yeah. and see because <laughs> I've just been on Mac for so long, and I just wanted to see what it was like, like what all the fucking hype was about. And yeah, I get it. Nice. I get it. I spent hours on that shit now. Oh my god! But I only have two friends that have PCs, so you know yeah. when I, when they're not on. But the thing is, if you show enough passion to something, people follow. It always happens. Like with paintball, for example, I showed all this passion towards paintball. My friends like, hey, can I go paintballing with you now? And they start same thing. Yeah, but I feel like that's one of those things where like everyone will say that they're down to go, but when it's like Saturday morning at nine a.m. and, and you're on the way, up, yeah. You always get those texts like, "Hey, bro, can't can't make it today." It's so annoying. Yo, dude, I'm I'm down to go next weekend. <laughs> it's like, no, you're not. <laughs> and right when someone sends a message like that to me, I just know that they've completely been written off my list of who I'm going to hit up to play next. I'm never inviting you again. Yeah, honestly, because just I don't. I hate getting that text. It's like we are all squatted up, we're ready to go run it, and like the I'm too tired because I went out last night. Like we've we've been planning this. Like we told you told me on Thursday we're going to play on Saturday. Like. You plan around, plan around it, my friend. Do you feel like you're gonna play when you're going on on these tour dates? Uh, play paintball. You like pop into like weird places and and just play. That'd be so sick. I tried doing that when I was on tour. Really? Yeah, it ended awful. I I went and played in Arizona when I when I had a show out there, and I ended up falling and like hitting my fucking knee on this like concrete thing. Oh my! And so God. I had to play the show like limping. <laughs> I was like, dude, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> You're just showing a film though, so you might be okay. Yeah, yeah I can sit in the chair. Yeah, exactly. Well, the Q and A. You can elevate cap. and ice the whole oh, entire I'm time. Good. You're so good. Icy to go. hot. Yes. Going. We're fantastic. You're fine. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna run into the same issues. <laughs> 
Today's podcast is also brought to you by Talkspace. We all need someone to talk to, a person who can support us through rough patches or even when everyday ups and downs of life happen. That's where Talkspace comes in. Talkspace online therapy makes taking care of your mental health more affordable and convenient than ever before. Simply provide your preferences for therapy and Talkspace will match with one of 4,000 plus therapists the very same day. Send your therapist unlimited texts, audio picture, or video messages from anywhere at any time, no matter what you're going through, you're not alone. Best of all, it's convenient and easy to use and it's affordable. One month of therapy on the Talkspace platform costs about the same amount as a single face-to-face -face session. Best of all, you'll never have to wait a week to share what's on your mind. Talkspace has more than 4,000 licensed therapists who are experienced in addressing the challenges we all face. To match with your perfect therapist for a fraction of the price of traditional, traditional therapy, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code ADHD. You're going to get $45 off of your first month and show your support for the show. Show. That's ADHD and Talkspace.com. Today's podcast is also brought to you by Hims. What is Hims? Hims is a new wellness brand for men. The thing is, a lot of dudes are going to be losing their hair by 35. When you start to notice your hair loss, it's already too late. Um, but right now, it's easier than ever to keep the hair that you have, all thanks to him. Forhims.com is a one stop shop for hair loss, skincare, sexual wellness. And it's all for men. Uh, you know, thanks to science, baldness can be optional. Hims connects you with real doctors and medical grade solutions to treat hair loss. There's no waiting room, no awkward in person doctor visits that you got to sit through. And you can save hours by going to forhims.com. Answer a couple questions, the doctor will review it, and they can prescribe you immediately. Products are shipped directly and discreetly to your door. Order now. My listeners get a trial month of Hims for just $5 today, right now while supplies last. See website for full details and safety information. This would cost you hundreds if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy, but you can go to forhimscom slash ADHD. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash ADHD, forhimscom slash a D H D. Um, talk to me about these Carhartt tees, man, because you're actually wearing one of your 1340 shirts right now. Oh yeah. Um, so I made a collection like in November during Thanksgiving time, um, where it's a shirt that says the suburbs, and on the back it has a photo of a cul-de-sac, and it says like the ideas in my head are too big for the small town I live in. So I'm like, I can't remember the exact quote, but um. Yeah, I really liked it. I thought the the putting on a Carhartt t-shirt would be really fitting because like people from the Midwest, not only like, tr Carhartt is becoming very trendy right now, but it's having a resurgence. Yeah. But I think Carhartt is I've all, my, the version of Carhartt I've known was the working man, the blue the blue collar guy who has like the big heavy Carhartt jacket and is like a construction worker. And I made this shirt targeted towards Midwestern people. So I felt like it only makes sense to add to the story by putting it on a Carhartt shirt. And the next thing you know, like literally like within like the two months of me dropping it, like so many other companies dropped on Carhartt. Like the work in progress stuff started coming out, like the hair and pressing stuff started coming out. And I was like, hey, I don't want to say it, but like I definitely did it first. <laughs> <laughs> did Carhartt hit you up? Oh, they definitely did. And they were not stoked about it. They weren't? But I was like, because I, I guess I said it was like a, a full full blown partnership, which I thought it was because I had a connection at like who had I, I thought he was a Carhartt employee, but I guess he was just he just had a really big plug with Carhartt, and I was ordering like he was just trapping the Carhartt. He pretty out of the much trunk. was. So I called it a partnership, truly thinking it was a partnership. Just to find out that it was not official at all. <laughs> and your connect was. <laughs> and, and he was kind of just slinging he, me these he shirts. He changed his phone number after that. Right. And I was like, 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 but then I was nervous. I'm like, oh my God, like I've bought so many of these Carhartt shirts. What if they just like say no? Because I the, not all the orders were done. Like 75% of the orders were done being like made. And uh, I obviously had 25% left. And that's when I got the email saying like, hey, like. Uh, big ass cease and desist letter, like ten pages. Holy shit! And I was like, "Ah, oh, this is, this isn't good." 
That must feel. I know that must feel crazy. Like for you, like one, you have like all the pressure of school, and you gotta like make sure your grades, are, all that shit. I can't even relate to that because I didn't go to college like that. Yeah. But then you know you're getting these cease and desist letters yeah. from these corporations <laughs> while you're trying to you know shoot and edit your YouTube videos yeah, right. and plan a fucking tour. <laughs> it, it was definitely like a strange feeling. I had to. It's not the first time I've gotten cease and desist because I've def, um I, there's been instances where. I used art that I thought was royalty free. Turns out it wasn't. In videos or what? No, like on, on clothing designs. Oh, really? Like I, I had this clothing design where it was like a, a, a money symbol. Turned out um, it was an Andy Warhol money symbol. Got it. And not uh, the, like probably not the best one to right. use on your clothing company. And because I, because I was working with a designer and he just sent it to me. I was like, oh, this is really cool. And I guess I could from that was like a good learning experience, like to research more about it and be like, hey, like I need like to make sure that this is not prior work because I thought he just kind of just drew it up, mm. and turns out he didn't. So what it. ended up happening? I was just kind of like just stop selling it. Got it. And it's that's cool. It's, it luckily hasn't escalated further than that. Just kind of just take down the marketing stuff that has it on it and move on with my life. So it's not a big deal. What do you see over the next year for yourself? Oh man, well, just. Trying my more best. simulation talk. Hopefully, I don't. I'm I'm out of this rabbit hole that I'm in. And you like, could just climb out, and I could just start thinking of life as enjoyable. <laughs> and because it's really, I have this simulation theory because I, when you go to school, you travel every weekend, literally every single weekend, and you make money from digitally, and you don't ever see it in real life. Like I don't feel like I had to clock in at my job and clocked out. So if I really put in the hours, cause it gets really gray with like this type of lifestyle. Yeah, do you feel like people like underestimate how much work you're actually doing? Oh, I, I talk about this so often, I, yes. Yeah. Cause I feel like when I tell like some, like one of my friends like, hey, who doesn't really know my lifestyle? I'm like, hey, I can't hang out, I'm, I'm working. And they're like, what Like, what do you mean work? I'm like, uh, yeah, like my life is like this. Like, like sure, I'm hanging out somewhere cool and I have my laptop out, I'm designing a design, like that's work. It, it might sound really nice. The The conditions of my work are definitely way more comfortable, but it definitely still is work. So uh, I find that I, I run into that same issue as well because, you know, I'm doing so much shit that I feel like people often don't understand everything that goes into it where like it just sounds a lot simpler than it is. You know, they don't know like all of the time that goes into just making one hour of you just even yeah. this. You yeah, know? Like, and then when you, a lot of, with the, the social media wave just on an extreme up, people will always see the the positive and the result of everything. And they never see the actual work. The struggle, yeah. I know that's super cliche, but it really is true. Uh, that kind of goes back to the idea of like how people are like, oh, he kind of just blew up overnight. No one really ever blows up overnight because there had to have been years and years that led up to that moment where he could have gotten the exposure to be a technically overnight ex success. But those overnight success people have usually been making music for probably like five years prior, and they had the opportunity to make that one song yeah. that popped them off. So that, I guess I kind of just went on a tangent there, but that's how I feel about like our work. Until a big play happens, people don't recognize it. They're just like, oh, like he's just having fun. He's just fucking around. But in reality, like, it's all going towards a bigger goal. 100%. Yeah, it's all the little moves, man. Yeah, like you can't go out there and be like, yeah, I want to make the next Facebook. And and what are you going to do? Like, you, it doesn't just happen. You have to put in like hours and hours of work. And I, I don't even know why I just compared my life to Facebook. I was going to say, what is your Facebook? <laughs> I don't know. I, I just kind of like, when I, I don't want people to think that the only way I build my clothing company is by having famous people wear the, <laughs> the shirts. Of course, yeah. That's not the only thing. There's definitely way more that goes into it. Well, you know, one thing that I wanted to bring up too is like the way that you incentivize your fans and 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 kind of had them, you did this like comment unlock thing, which I would yeah, see yeah. like they like they would comment on a photo and then they get a uh, some kind of access code to yeah. be able to buy the clothes. Yeah, so… In business, um, it's a pretty hard practice. Like people are really against the idea of putting barriers to to checkout. Like further, more steps away from a checkout is a horrible thing. But I went against the grain and I thought it'd be interesting to put a passcode on the website where you can't even see the products unless you have the passcode. And this all stemmed from like my research with… Uh, like other streetwear companies and how a lot of them become successful due to exclusivity and being more coveted. Because there's two types of different 
hype beast streetwear companies, the ones that are really coveted and get reselled for like extreme amounts of money. Like for ex- basic example, extre- uh, Supreme sells their tees for 35. That same tee can go for 200. And then there's the, on the flip side, there's companies like, uh, they're at like Obey, Diamond Supply, that are at like Zoomies or PacSun and they're just readily available. Both make a lot of money in different ways because people who sell like through like ba- um, bulk orders to like major retailers are selling a lot of units. So even though like their prices are lower, they get way more. And then also when you have like Supreme, you have you have a uh, popularity that comes with it and people are more coveted your pieces. So I was like, hey, I, I can't get into stores. There's no way. So I need to find a way to make my stuff cool when I have really no basis of anything. This is my thought process like four years ago. Um, so if I put a passcode on this, and the only way to get the passcode is by me personally sending you the passcode, it definitely develops this level, this, this relationship with the customer and the seller. So, and it also makes it exclusive because you can't get in. And ever since I did that, my sales just like skyrocketed. And it's how it's, this has been the business model since day one. And uh, there's some other ways you can get the passcode now. So it's not so You must be line. sending a shit ton of messages, dude. Bro, I don't even get me started. Like, <laughs> so like I do one collection per month and it's like for a week. That week, it's called drop weeks in our house. And I just sit on my ca- the couch all day. I have three phones open and I <laughs> stack them like side by side by side. And I send codes to literally over 10,000 people. Damn. It's uh, it's pretty horrible. Like, but I'm very thankful that people buy it. But it's a lot of work. Like, yeah. it, it's like strange work. So in those drop weeks, when I'm sending out all these codes, I just turn on Netflix and I kid you not, I watch entire shows. Like, not seasons, like shows. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, start it Monday. Sh- Shameless is on. Come Sunday, Shameless is done. <laughs> all like eight seasons yes. or what? Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's very, So I guess I got to keep up with my pop culture in those one weeks. But yeah, those weeks, just, we just had that week last week. And it was like, I was watching like five movies a day <laughs> and just sending codes. That's insane, man. Yeah. Well, dude, just to wrap it up, um, you know, for any kids right now who are listening, who are in school, yeah. who want to start doing something different with their lives, who have an idea but don't know how to, you know, take that next step, who are making excuses that they don't have enough time. Yeah. What do you tell them? Oh, I hate that excuse. The whole not enough time for anything is the absolute worst excuse. Like maybe even just a simple version of it where people say they don't have time to go to the gym because they're so busy. No one is too busy to do that. You just don't you haven't committed in your head that you want to do it. Mm. Like right when you flip the switch where you realize that everything is possible and if you really wanted to do something, it's possible, it would change your life. Because say you, you go to work nine to your excuse is you go to work nine to five and you have a kid at home. And then after that, you want to do whatever. Well, how about you just wake up a little earlier and go before work? And like, right when you find those different, ex- like different ways to manage your time, anything is possible. I hate that excuse of you don't have time. Everyone has time. Only reason why you don't have time uh, is if you're like in a really bad, bad situation in life where it's hard for you to like do anything. If you're like super poor, you grew up in a bad, you have a really bad home life or something like that. I'm like, I'm really sorry, but things are still possible if you really care enough. So in all, just put your uh, your focus into things that like you really are passionate about. It makes it way easier because instead of it thinking of it as like, a, oh, this is like a hardship I need to get over where it's like, I have this company, but it's gonna be so tough to make it. Well, maybe like the struggle of making the company, find that to be fun. Mm. If you find that fun, not, you'd want to do it. And that's how I look at everything. Beautiful, man. Yeah, <laughs> poetic. <laughs> Dude, uh, why don't you tell everyone where to find you on socials? Oh, yeah. Well, guys, thank you for having me. Thank you if you've listened this far. <laughs> you find me on Instagram at Justin Escalona, YouTube, Justin Escalona, everything, Justin Escalona. And uh, the clothing company is 1340 Collective on everything as well. My dude, thank you so much for doing this, yeah, man. Thank you for having now, me. Now, all the kids in the comments can can just be like, thank you. Well, thank you, kids in the comments, because I never thought Travis had asked me to do this. What? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Okay, let's do it. Oh, yeah, dude. I think we talked about it at, uh, at Tao that one time. Oh, yeah, that is We right. had dinner. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess it was just 
in one year, not the other. All right, dude. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, man. Thanks, everybody. Peace. It's ADHD.